Yo, yo, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Optimize Your Body. Today, I am solo. Going to be dropping some, some gems down on how to build your abs or how to at least have a, let's say, respectable midsection. Who does not want a good-looking waistline? Let's face it, it's easy on the eyes. Um, it's a sign, above everything, it's a sign of good health. And I'm going to run more through that when we come to it. But, you know, as I say, as I always say, it's all about health, man. Seriously, you put, you put your, uh, your health a priority and you focus on feeling good, getting as healthy as you can, eating the right foods, doing all the simple things in life, getting enough sleep, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're going to get that midsection. Okay, I know it sounds a bit woo-woo and a bit hippie-ish, but I'll give you more details now. And don't get me wrong, there's a hell of a lot which uh, there's a hell of a lot that goes into it when it comes to you know building a respectable midsection or you know lean-looking, well, let's just say washboard abs as they call it. A few factors there which which have a bit big impact on that, um, and I'll, I'll run through each and every one of those now to try and give you as much information as I can to help you reveal those abdominals. Anyways, I'm going to be changing the name of this podcast to Build Your Best Body, I think, because that's the name of my training program, and my webinar, which I'm going to be hosting soon, folks, so uh, stay tuned for that, and if you can if you can drop me like, I don't know um, if any of you uh, uh, kind of follow me on social media platforms, if you can drop me like a direct message on Instagram, at Martin Silva Fitness, Silva is obviously spelled S-I-L-V-A, Drop me a direct message with your email address, and I'll keep you updated on my um, my free my free webinar. I'll, I'm going to be sending you out some some free content then as well. Hopefully, it'll be weekly as well. Just free free stuff and um, really useful stuff as well in order to get you in the best shape possible and fit and healthy. Anyways, who as I said, who doesn't want good looking abdominals? I know there's a lot of you listening now are like tuning in because the reason I've kind of decided to drop this podcast on just specifically on abdominals because the amount of requests and inquiries I get about how do I get abs how do I get abs like yours or you know how do I get lean around the uh, around the tummy and obviously there's a lot of factors which come into that now let's just say I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with I'm gonna for argument's sake I'm gonna Target this one out there to all the beginners who maybe have just started training or just thinking about, you know, starting their fitness campaign or have maybe been training for some time and they're just looking to to drop down stubborn body fat in order to reveal their abdominals or wherever that may be. Stubborn body fat um, will be stored in different areas, right? So let's just talk about females. Okay, now with females... As I've said before, I've trained hundreds, if not over a thousand people, I would say. And majority of them are women. I would say about, I would go as far as to say about 70, 80% women I've trained in my time. And they carry, obviously, carry body fat in different areas. Now with women, obviously, with the, you know, the reproductive side of it and, you know, with the menstrual cycles and, you know, obviously the body is just effectively designed to procreate, right? So... You know, women have more, women have like childbearing hips generally. So women will tend to, with the Eastern, uh, some, some women are Eastern dominant, um, where they, you know, the Eastern levels are slightly out of whack. And that can relate to uh, other hormones, which are not quite, not quite regulating properly. But what I'm getting at is women will carry stubborn fat in different areas. Usually, just to break it down for you, it's legs, bums, and tum, right? So... Some women is around the thighs, the hips, the bum, uh, whereas other women, they generally don't seem to hold much around the hips and the thighs, but any stubborn fat will be stored around their stomach. Now, it does vary from person to person, but certain people do tend to, especially women, they tend to store it in, in I would say all in all, it's more about around the thighs and hips, but it can be just purely around the midsection for some women and they, they, they don't have any problems with the, uh, with the lower half. Whereas with guys, stubborn fat is always going to be around the stomach first um, and then around the lower back. And then what I've gathered is finally it'll be the moobs then, okay, the man boobs. 
So, yeah, it's, it's different areas for different people. But if you're a beginner listening to this and you're just starting out on your fitness campaign, you're like, right, I want to get abs. Now, be patient, okay? And try not to focus too much on it. Like I said, just try and enjoy the process. You're probably on a roll already, so you're probably already losing heaps of body fat, building muscle, and at least getting somewhere. But you should be feeling better above all. Now, it takes some time for some people to get abdominals, whereas for other people, it won't take long at all, and boom, their abs will be revealed. Now, let's just say the number one uh, fact that I would like to mention is nutrition. Now, you don't need me to tell you that. In order to lose body fat and shift stubborn body fat, the most effective way to do it is over time. Now, I don't believe in these fads and short-term fixes. As you all know, I'm, I'm, I'm very straightforward, and I'll tell you straight up that it doesn't happen overnight. And if you want, if you want to sustain it for a lifetime, and you want to get abs for a lifetime, and you know, keep your body fat down, and keep looking good, keep feeling good for the rest of your life, and more importantly, obtain like sustainable health, then you need to do it slowly, slow and steady. Slow and steady wins a race. Okay, so build the muscle and nutrition, two most important elements when it comes to building your midsection. Now, if you're new to training, what I'm going to say is you need to give yourself a good solid, I would say, nine months to a year of lifting weights consistently. Let's just say two or three, at least two or three purposeful weight training sessions a week in order to continuously keep building muscle. Now, at the start of your journey, if you've hired a good trainer or if you've done it properly, Within the first, say, four to eight weeks, you should have built a fair bit of muscle, a fair bit of good quality muscle. And then what I've observed is after that period of about eight to 12 weeks, it tends to slow down a bit, becomes more incremental in terms of the muscle building process. But as I mentioned before, one pound, just one pound of lean muscle, which will be built pretty quick at the start of your journey, that will burn an extra 30 to 50 calories a day obviously dependent on the person, just to keep that muscle on your body. So an analogy I use, which I actually stole off the Mind Pump guys, like I do steal a lot of this stuff, Mind Pump Media Podcast. Um, an analogy I like to use is, um, crap, what was it? Calories, right. So when you build muscle, it's expensive to keep muscle tissue on your body, and it's going to cost you, it's going to cost your body a lot of calories, Great analogy. So muscle tissue is expensive. It's going to cost you a lot of calories. Whereas let's just say fatty tissue is cheap as chips. Okay, it's dirt cheap. A pound of fat is going to burn two to three calories a day. It's useless when it comes to fat burning and elevating your metabolism. Obviously, it's body fat. So it's cheap. Muscle tissue is expensive to keep on your body. It's going to cost your body a lot of calories just to keep that muscle on your body. So if you really focus on building muscle, over time, let's just say over the 9 to 12 month period, you would have built a significant amount of muscle, again, depending on the person. Certain people are are blessed with with godly um, muscle building genetics, right? And they will just build muscle like there's no tomorrow. And their shape will transform really fast. But generally, 9 to 12 months of building some good quality muscle. And what you'll notice then is the midsection will automatically, even if you didn't change anything with nutrition, um, it's automatically going to be um, a lot tighter. You would have lost a lot of body fat around the midsection. And it will be very, very noticeable. Now, when it comes to nutrition, the best way to, to, to obviously reveal your abs, I mean, you're going to need to put yourself in a calorie deficit at some point to get leaner. Now, I don't always recommend this. If you're new to training, I never ever like to put people straight into a calorie deficit. I like to build their metabolism up first. I like to lock them in. I like to try. It doesn't always happen to lock people in for, say, at least two to three months. So I can get them tracking their calories and and figure out what's going on there and what kind of foods they're eating. Uh, But initially, I like to get them to eat um, a decent amount of calories and just focus on building muscle because if you go into too much of a calorie deficit at the start because you want to get leaner and guess what you're not going to build muscle as fast you're going to put your body into a little bit too much stress 
And then over time, you're not going to get that midsection tighter. It's going to take a lot longer because, in, in fact, you're going to slow your metabolism. You're not going to be supercharging your metabolism like you would be if you did it the correct way of just focusing on eating enough protein, eating healthy foods, lifting weights properly. Boom. Those things alone are going are gonna to dial in the midsection a bit. But, yeah, once you've, once you've um, you know, you've done, a, say, a good few weeks of lifting weights and uh, you feel good, you've built some muscle, then you can put yourself into a calorie deficit. So you need to be essentially burning more calories than what you're eating in order to lose body fat, right, to get leaner. Now, there's a fi- I'm not going to go too much into detail because I don't want to confuse you, but you need to be eating sufficient, a sufficient amount of protein. Now, again, it depends on the person, but generally if I've got someone lifting weights with me, um, doing a couple of PT sessions a week, or even if it's an online client, I'll get them following. If it's an online client, I'll get them following my program, which is um, it's a nine-week program, the first one is, and it'll take you through three different phases of lifting weights. And then what you're going to get out of that is um, you're going to be building muscle, obviously, but then if you dial the nutrition in and you eat sufficient protein, now again, it's going to depend, like I said, on the person, but you want to generally, I, I try and aim people to, I try and um, get people to target one gram of protein per pound of body weight to start with, and then I can alter it as we go uh, when necessary. So, yeah, so one if you can aim for like one gram, I always call them pounds, I don't know why I do, it's the American way, but one gram of protein per pound of body weight, if you can average that, you know, over the space of a week, so let's just say um, you're averaging per day, if you're weighing in, at around in kilos, let's just say like 60 kilos, okay, then there's 2.2 pounds in a kilo, so what would that be in pounds, 60 kilos, 120 pounds, let's just say around about, not the best of maths, 140 pounds, so that means you would look like, need to aim for around about 140 grams of protein, right, that then is going to make sure your body is, um, you, you got sufficient amino acids to repair the muscle tissue, and also to charge your metabolism because protein takes up a lot of energy to digest okay so that alone is gonna is gonna help you lose body fat but yeah so you could call it thermogenic but the bottom line is protein i'm not going to go into detail as to why why it's so effective because i could be here for, for you know forever as to why it's so beneficial sorry but you need a sufficient amount okay to reveal that midsection and then you can you can manipulate the carbohydrates and the fats so you are you can you can do carb cycling, which is um, which is very effective. So, for example, on the days you're not lifting or not doing anything too strenuous, try to reduce your carbohydrate intake and just stick to mainly protein, fats, and fibrous carbohydrates. Now, what I mean by that is like basically plants, so vegetables mainly. So heaps of vegetables with each meal. Uh, mainly greens, but lots of different types. And if you have that with uh, some good protein sources, providing you're not a vegetarian, then you can bang in um, good quality sources of meat, lean red meat, um, you know, fish, ocean fish, make sure you get that in pretty regular, like salmon, mackerel, sardines, that kind of thing. Um, include that with your meals. Obviously, eggs is another, another source of uh, an egg is just protein and fat. Is there's no carbs in a in an egg, so you know like an omelette for example, uh, with plenty of greens. That's an example, a simple example of a high protein, high fat meal with with fibrous carbs. And now the fiber is going to obviously satiate you, so it's going to keep you fuller for longer. It's going to bulk out. Sorry to be crude, but it's going to bulk out your stool, and um, it's going to slow down the digestion process in order to give you sustained energy. So on the days you don't train or don't do anything strenuous or if you're not moving much, avoid carbohydrates, especially cereals, pasta bread. We're trying to eliminate them or reduce them anyway, uh, regardless. But even the, you know, even the, the, the kind of nutrient-dense starchy carbs such as like you know, quinoa, potatoes, sweet potatoes and stuff, try and minimize or, or, or eliminate them on those days as well and go super low carbs, almost like the keto. I don't know if you've heard of that, the ketosis, the ketosis way of eating. I was going to say diet then. I hate that word. I was going to say ketosis diet, but um, I don't like using that word. So the ketosis way of eating where you're essentially having this really low carbs, high fats, and sufficient protein. So if you can try and do that, 
um, most days, that is going to dial in your midsection. And also, don't forget, carbohydrates, like one gram of carbohydrates, will turn into around about three grams of water. So if you're holding what you think is body fat around the midsection, a lot of that sometimes, especially the lower ab, you know, around the waistline where your belly button is, a lot of that is going to be... Um, you know, there's going to be some water retention there as well. So just by reducing carbs, you're going to notice a difference in your midsection because you're going to, you're going to shift water. Generally, you're going to shift some fluid uh, away from the midsection. So it's going to reveal your abs more. But in terms of losing body fat, like I said, calorie deficit. So you need to be uh, burning more than you're eating. So if you have a sedentary job or if you don't generally move enough, I always advise a simple measure. Get yourself... Uh, sorry, a simple tool, get yourself a wrist device. A Fitbit is what I use personally, and that'll track how many steps you're doing. Aim to do, let's just say, at least 8,000 steps a day, 8,000 to 15,000 steps a day. It's not a great deal. That's like at least 40 minutes of moving a day, roughly. I think 8,000 steps accumulates to roughly around about 40 minutes of moving a day. So as long as you're moving for at least that time each day, that's going to increase your, your calorie output. So it's just simple, really, guys. Um, it's pretty straightforward. But number one is building muscle. So on that note, squats and deadlifts are the ultimate two exercises for building muscle and, more importantly, building your midsection. If you ask me, in terms of actually shaping your midsection and making your abdominals more prominent... I don't think anything is gonna is gonna outdo squats because it is it's the king. It's the king. Squats are the king. So if you learn how to squat properly with good technique, or at least you know reasonable te- good technique, reasonably good technique, should I say, um, that alone is gonna definitely definitely gonna uh, help you progress around the midsection because you think about it, you've got the load of the bar on your shoulders, okay, and as as you're going down and coming up, you are having to really, if you really focus on actually drawing your stomach in, which is something I've only really be, really applied over the last few months, really suck in that midsection so it's tight before you go down, right? So imagine you've got the bar on your back, okay? What I tend to do is I breathe all the air out and I'm literally flexing my abs and I'm holding that in tight. And I'm not releasing that tension until I've come back up. So I'm holding that in as I'm descending down and I'm driving up. When I stand up, I'll ease off it a bit and then I'll focus on flexing my bum muscles then at the top of the movement when I extend my legs. Okay, so just those simple tips. You have to really focus on connecting to your abs. Now with the abdominals, it's, it's actually, it's officially the hardest muscle group to connect with, right? To actually activate your abs and contract them properly is it's a task and it takes time in terms of building the mind muscle connection you know you you have to connect with them properly so you know I, th- I may have mentioned this before but lifting weights is people don't seem to realize it's literally at least 70 percent psychological okay you have to be connecting there's no point so many people do this as well and you know i used to be one of them back in the day where you're lifting weights but you're you're just doing it willy-nilly. You're not really tuned in to the exact muscles you should be activating. Now, when you're doing abs, for example, if you're doing um, some, some form of sit-ups or if you're doing some sort of weighted abdominal exercise, you know, you need to really think about flexing your spine. So you're actually curling your spine. Um, analogy I like to use, another one, is um, Imagine your, you know, our back. In our back, I think we have, don't quote me on this, I think we have about 35 different vertebrae bones, right? Now, as you're sitting up and crunching your abs, imagine those, the vertebrae in your lower spine, especially in your lumbar spine, are like dominoes. Yeah, and, you, and one by one, you're boom, 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 knocking down the dominoes. Knocking, each vertebrae is curling separately, just like dominoes, if that makes sense. That was a shit explanation. But as you're crunching up, it's like bang, 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 bang. Dominoes on the vertebrae. Okay, so it's like, it's a slow, steady movement. And then when you come up and you raise your shoulder blades off the mat, so you're flexing your spine and crunching your abs, squeeze the abs and hold it for a second. So you're really applying tension to the abs. 
Sorry, that was a terrible, uh, that Domino's thing there. And that was an old analogy that just come back to me. And uh, that didn't go down too well. <laughs> Ignore that. Just focus on tension. Boom. As you crunch the abs, engage and focus on the tension there. Um, and talking about weighted abdominal movements um, is so important. I mean, the abdominals are no different to any other body part, right? So... What what I find fascinating is because we're we, you know like I've said before most of us are brainwashed in terms of like doing things correctly in the gym. Now I see heaps of people doing hundreds of reps or hundreds of crunches and lots of reps on the abs with no weight whatsoever, thinking that that is going to get their abs um, more prominent and build them. Uh-uh. That's incorrect, unfortunately. Uh, as much as doing body weight stuff can be effective for a short period of time if you're a beginner nothing is going to trump doing weighted abdominal movements so for example like one of my favorites is um crunches with with like a medicine ball so this is on my program anyway on my build your best body program start off with a light medicine ball imagine you're lying down on the mat arms and legs are extended so you're lying fully extended with your body medicine ball in your hands okay and then what you're doing is you're crunching so you're just lifting your shoulder blades off the mat bringing the ball over and then tucking your knees into your chest at the same time so that medicine ball is going over your knees towards your feet and then you're going back to the starting position if that makes sense but that's on my program anyway and um i'll let you know how you can get hold of one of my abdominal programs anyway at the end of this podcast to give you uh, uh to give you more more detail and more videos and stuff. But yeah, my, my, my program is, is the one because you'll be hitting your abs at least two, three times a week because you'll be doing the whole body every time you train. So it's that frequency, folks. Um, you know, the more often you hit the, the body parts, the faster they're going to grow and change. Uh, and also, like I said, the technical side of it is so important. You know, the mind-muscle connection and doing it properly, which is why my program is so dope because there's videos of every single exercise from yours truly. So you can't really go wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. Genetics does play a part in, in, um, in, how, your, in how your abs are going to look. And, you know, having that sexy-looking um, lean midsection. Maybe it's a bit over the top there, sexy-looking, but you know what I mean. Um, having a lean midsection. Genetics are going to play a part in that, like I said, in terms of the shape of your abdominals and... Um, effectively how they look um to the human eye and how how much they stand out um ultimately is you know your genetics are going to play a part in that because i've i've trained people in the past and i've coached people for shows and some people i'm not going to name any names obviously but no matter how lean they get i mean i've had i've had one guy i had him down to oh on the calipers he was like four percent body fat he was inside out shredded and his obliques, so the muscles on the side of his abdominals, were really, really good and prominent. So from the side, it looked great. But head on, he still didn't have, like, noticeable abs. Although his midsection was shredded and there was no, virtually no body fat there, you still really couldn't see um, much of an abdominal wall. And that, that is genetics, you know. So, um, but yeah, for the most part, if you focus on giving yourself a bit of time consistently training your abs like say two three times a week not hammering them just doing one exercise each time you train um, and doing it properly that is going to make them more prominent and using weight as well but then build the muscle over time as i say that's going to melt away any excess body fat you have or any stubborn body fat so lifting weights is number one um, actually lifting weights and nutrition obviously you need to you need to um educate as much as yourself uh, educate yourself as much as you can on nutrition um, and yeah, it's just, it's just giving it time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Keep lifting weights and keep building muscle and watch what happens really. Um, but genetics does certainly load the gun if you like, when it comes to, um, an aesthetically pleasing body, it does definitely load the gun, but then that hard work and that self-discipline is what is going to be, um, it's going to determine the outcome really in terms of, uh, you know, building your best body if you like. So, um, yeah, what I'd like to mention as well is, um, you know, like I said, with guys, if they've got stubborn body fat or, you know, if they're not really dialed in with their nutrition and, you know, they, 
they tend to eat more than they burn most of the time or eating the wrong foods or whatnot. And they have like what we call in the UK a beer belly uh, or like, you know, like a, like a belly covering, sorry, fat covering the abs. Um, you know, it's, it's not a good place, man or woman. It's not really a good sign to, if, you've, if you're holding body fat around the midsection because let's face it, most of the essential internal, organ, internal organs are located around that area. So if you have excess body fat around that area, then that is is a sign that you have um, you have internal fat, visceral or visceral, however you pronounce it, visceral fat, um, which is which is coated around the uh, the internal organs, and this it's really unhealthy, and it's it's definitely not good to have just to be holding body fat around that area, to be honest. So, like I always say, you should put health first, and forget about oh, you know, I want shredded abs. Just check yourself, and if you are. I don't mean to be kind of patronizing or shoot anyone down, but I'm here to help. And uh, I just, I'm just making you aware that if you do have body fat around that area, then focus on doing something about it for health purposes because long term, it's not going to do you any favors. You know, you're going to put yourself at risk for uh, um, all different types of, of um, health ramifications going forward. So the main driver for you should be, okay, health. I don't want to be diagnosed with something um, or put myself... Um, you know, in a position where I've je- uh, I've compromised my health um, from simply from simply not really um, focusing on my health and 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 shifting the body fat around that area. So just be mindful of that, folks. Right? Um, you know, and when it comes to let's face it, you know, m- all of most of us want to look good. All right. So you want to look good. You want to you want to feel good. You know, we only get one life. We we, we like to. You know, we need we need to look after our minds mainly and and um, tune into our health and and feel good. You know, we all like to feel good, but we want to look good as well. And as I've said before, you know, if you if you could make your health a priority, focus on making um, healthy choices most of the time. Focus on training properly, moving enough, drinking enough water, sleeping enough. You know, most of the time. That's not to say you haven't got a life. Um, everything else will fall into place, and then. You know, the, the, the physique and the midsection will be a byproduct of you looking after yourself. So I know it sounds, again, it sounds a bit like a bit far-fetched, but take it from me, um, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And when you get to that level where things are just falling into place, you have abdominals without even thinking about it. You're not, you know, you don't have an eating disorder and a, a major body image issue like I used to have. Obviously, I've still got that. Um, it doesn't go overnight, but... You know the abdominals are there now as a bright a byproduct of of looking after myself and not overeating. Uh, I still do overeat, you know, maybe once or twice a week, but most of the time, um, like I said, seventy, eighty percent. Well, as I say, eighty, ninety percent of the time, I'm I'm, I'm pretty um, I'm pretty on point with with uh, living a healthy lifestyle. So that's the most important thing, really. And um, as humans, you know, we want to be. It's, it's only natural to want to be, um, you know, looking attractive in terms of. Um, sorry, you know looking good and um how much want to say this now we want to look good in terms of the opposite sex we want to be all of us it's it's you know it's an evolutionary thing we want to look good we want to we want to um feel good when it comes to shit what am i even trying to say here (laughs) it's an evolutionary thing right so if if we if we go back in time millions of years ago now a sign if if you had not carrying much body fat around the midsection and around that area it's a sign of good health right so it is going to be more attractive if you're not if you're not holding um fat around there around around the abs or you know um mainly around that area if you haven't got excess body fat around there it's it's a sign of good health you know so it it does make us more appealing to the opposite sex. Not that that really matters to a lot of people, but you know what I'm trying to say here. Um, most of us like that feel good factor, so that should be a good driver for you to shift to shift body fat. You know, just it's a sign of good health. You know, so that alone is uh, is a, is a good indication. You know, so um, yeah, that was a bit of a weird rant, but there we go. Um, it's it's very very different when you haven't got anyone <laughs> to conversate conversate with on a podcast and bounce back and forth, but it's like you just sat here talking to yourself. Very interesting experience, but um, I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> um, but yeah, another thing is rotational movements as well. So I was talking about ob- obliques, and there's nothing better than um, 
good set of obliques. So you know the muscles on the side of your um, of your waistline. If you look from the side, you have like um, you'll have the obliques, right? Now they look great when you when you have prominent obliques, um, but more importantly, in, in order to keep your um, you stop you from getting injured and keep your core healthy, if you like, and strong. Because let's face it, later down the line, um, strength is so important, people. Please don't neglect it. But talking about the core, having a strong core is going to mitigate any kind of um, ailments going forward, any injuries, or it's going to make you a lot less prone to getting injured and putting your back out and putting yourself out of action if you're doing functional rotational movements. So, for example, um, twisting movements. Now, I don't know if any of you have used like a a pulley machine or or like resistance bands or anything like that, but just twisting from side to side. Um, for example, I'll try and explain it now. Pulley machines, you know, like um, like the cable fly machines in the gym. If you set one of them up, so you just you've just got one handle connected to it, and it's like in line with your chest. Uh, the handle is. Grab the handle with both hands. Okay, so put one hand on the handle. And then seal the other hand with the other hand, if that makes sense. So you've just got two hands gripping it tight. Keep the arm straight and just rotate right the way around. So twist right round uh, with a light weight and draw the stomach in as you're doing it. And that is then going to work the obliques and all the intrinsic core muscles, which are really important. And, you know, like I said, for strength and for health. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the way your, your waistline looks as well. Because although you, 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 you'd be building muscle, if you're using, because this is another myth which absolutely destroys me, is like doing weighted abs is going to make your waist bigger. And it's like, really, how much bigger is your waist going to grow from doing weighted abs, right? If you get, if you get yourself lean and you, you shift the body fat, most of the body fat around there, all that's going to happen is going to make your abs look much more prominent and leaner. Um, and it's going to give you more of a leaner, healthier look. Um, even if they, even if you did build them a tiny bit, like let's say a millimeter, which would take ages, by the way, just to get any growth around that area, it's, you're still going to look, your waist is still going to look smaller. So ignore the bullshit you hear women talking about, these Insta-famous women on uh, on Instagram saying, oh, you know, weighted abs are bad, they make your, your abs bigger, they make your waist bigger. Absolute bullcrap. Cod shit, seriously. Um, weighted abs is the way forward. But what I would say, before you dive into doing weighted abs... Focus on uh, core stability. So, if, especially if, if you've ever experienced back problems, which is very common, you need to build the core stability first. So, start doing, you know, like the planks, four planks, um, pelvic floor bridges, uh, quadrupeds. Quadruped is when you're on all fours on the mat and you raise one arm up so it's straight and you raise the opposite leg straight and extend both of them. Draw your stomach in and just repeat that. But, um, yeah, I have a, an abdominal program anyway. So, um, like I said, if you want to drop me an email, martinsilver at hotmail.co.uk, I can fire that over to you. It only costs like um, £10. How much is it? It was like six, about $10, Aussie dollars, so about um, £7 or something like that. It's only cheap. So um, find me over a message, and I'll get that over to you. That will help you uh, learn more about the correct exercise to do with the correct technique. So, um, yeah, and um, that's pretty much a wrap. I hope I've, um, I hope I've dropped some knowledge bombs in. I hope I haven't confused matters too much. Quite a lot of info there, just, just purely talking about abs. But, um, yeah, take it from me, I didn't even train abs properly, even when I was doing shows, like the first couple of shows i done, I didn't even train my abs. And my abs still looked pretty good on stage. You know, they were still shredded and prominent, and that's simply because I dialed in um, the nutrition and reduce my body fat right down to a low, to a seriously low level. And, um, you know, that is what's going to reveal your abdominal wall. But in terms of making your abs look more prominent, even at higher body fat percentages, so even if you don't change anything with your diet, if you train abs properly, um, you know, to a certain extent, if you're carrying lots of body fat, you're not going to see shit, unfortunately, as harsh as that may sound. But when your body fat starts dropping, your abs will be more prominent at higher body fat percentages if you're training them correctly. So um, 
above above all, that abdominal program is good to teach you the basics and, and my favorite ab, um, exercises, but my training program, Build Your Best Body, nine-week training program, it will absolutely change the game view. Let me tell you now. So, And if it doesn't, I'll give you your money back. How about that? So, um, yeah, if you go over to my uh, over to my Instagram and just click the link in my bio, um, it's on there. Click the link. It'll bring up my blog explaining what the program is. Scroll to the bottom, and you can purchase the plan there. Guaranteed results or your money back. Um, if you haven't got Instagram, just head over to my website. It's www.martin-silver.co.uk. So go go check that out, and um, it's all it's all on my website. So that's pretty much it. That is a wrap. I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, above all, is try. I know it's very hard, but try not to focus too much on on um, looking and how you look and looking at your abs all the time and looking at um, areas which you're not happy with and um, comparing yourself to other people. As as Andrew and I cleared up on the last podcast, you know, looking at your social media platform and comparing yourself to other people and it just really screws your head up and it'll, it, I can tell you now you're setting yourself up for failure in the future because you're never going to, you're never going to be satisfied if you, if you continuously compare yourself to others and, and, uh, constantly weighing yourself and looking in the mirror all the time, um, to see results. It's perfectly normal to check yourself out from time to time. Obviously I do that as all you know, <laughs> as everyone knows based on my Instagram, but nowhere near as frequently now. So just try and focus on, like I said, doing the, um, focusing on health and making healthy choices and trying to integrate training as part of a healthy lifestyle rather than, um, you know, busting your balls and chasing your tail, doing crazy Christmas, uh, Christmas, um, crazy CrossFit. I was going to say then, uh, crazy kind of CrossFit training and high intensity stuff. And, um, you know, like you go on YouTube and you'll say three minute abs or five minute abs or, you know, two weeks, this one week, that, you know, you, you've got you've got to veer away from that and focus on the long term, bigger picture, right? So the the, the the starting point for you would be to get my training program, nine week plan, build your best by build your best body, um, yeah, and click the link in my bio and you'll get it. So I hope that was handy, and uh, yeah, thank you very very much for tuning in. Please, 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 can you give this uh, podcast a five star rating and a review on iTunes? It would be a massive help. Seriously, I'm really trying to grow this podcast. And to be honest, it ain't going to grow unless I get those reviews in. So please, 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 if you can do that, that would be great. And please leave, leave me your email address either way. Send me over your email address. I gave you, uh, sorry, send me over your email address um, on Instagram. Drop me a DM or just fire it over via email. Just um, send me an email um, and I'll have your address and I'll add that to my list and I'll send you out free content then. So you'll get free information, uh, nutrition, fitness, abs, you name it, you'll get it. All right, thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for the next one because I have a very influential figure here coming onto my podcast next week. She goes by the name of Nude Nutritionist on um, Instagram. Her name is Lindy Cohen. If you go and check her out on Instagram now, Nude, N-U-D-E underscore nutritionist, um, she's going to be on my podcast next week and I'm super excited because she is like next level when it comes she's a nutritionist um she's all about health and she is just um she's just going to be a great person to have on the show so thank you very much stay tuned for the next one peace and love <laughs>